absolutely fascinating uh, developments um, in the Middle East because FATA, now um, we're going to get a full explanation from Yanov, but FATA are the organisation that which run the Palestinian territories, not Gaza, of course, uh, because that's Hamas terrorists, but they have uh, put out this excoriating statement about what Hamas did, those terrorist attacks on the 7th of October. I, I don't think this has been, happened in isolation. I don't think that Fatah have just decided to do that, got up one morning and thought, I know, we'll put out this statement to condemn Hamas. Let's find out what's happening from Yanov Voller, who's senior lecturer in Middle East politics. Yanov, thanks for joining us uh, this morning, uh, sorry, this afternoon. Um, it, it, this is a, I mean, this is pretty astonishing that Fatah have done this. Just give us the context of this, please. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Um, I think that, to be fair, Fatah has been very cautiously um, criticizing Hamas for the decision to launch the onslaught against Israel. So it's not the first time that Fatah has been somewhat critical uh, toward uh, Hamas's decision, but it's the first time that it actually comes out in public to do so, and in such in, in, in such strong terms. I mean, this is a translation. And I just want to give our viewers here, or maybe, maybe, maybe just tuning in just in the last few minutes, because I've read this out a little bit earlier in the programme, but this is um, the, the official Fatah statement against Hamas. You didn't consult anyone before you went for the 7th of October attacks. This is a translation, by the way. You're responsible, and you're guilty of the greatest disaster in the history of the Palestinian people. You want Iran to rule over us. Your leaders live in seven-star hotels abroad. They also move their families from Gaza, and we are paying the price of war. I mean, they blame Israel as well, of course, and you would expect them to do so. But this is very, very pointed against Hamas. Where do you think this has come from? I mean, you're saying th there have been some criticisms before, but such a strong statement. Surely there's some international pressure that's been part of this, Yanov. Absolutely, and these are very these are very harsh words. In many ways, they they uh, echo the uh, the same accusations that the Israeli government has used against Hamas. And this probably has to do with the fact that Fatah and the Palestinian Authority are becoming increasingly visible as, as the as the only potential leaders of the Gaza Strip after the end of the fight. Yes. Um, uh, the the, the uh, Palestinian Prime Minister, uh, the, sorry, the President of the Palestinian Authority, Mahmoud Abbas, has actually appointed a new government in recent days, um, and this government can be described as a more technocratic government, and this has been part, partly at least, a response to the pressure by the Americans on the Palestinian Authority to create a government that could actually uh, that could actually take over the Gaza Strip after the end of the uh, of the fighting. Yes, and, and what do you think is the most likely thing to happen? I mean, you've, you've said that Fatah is probably going to do so, but would the Gazan people accept them, do you think? So we all know, of course, that the, 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 the Fatah was actually kicked out of Gaza in 2006. Yeah. And, and, they're, um, and they're seen as a very corrupt um, organisation as well. Yes, it has been criticised for its corruption, and it has been criticised also for being too... Um, uh, for being too, com uh, for being uh, almost complicit in Israel's uh, control of the of the West Bank, so it has suffered from some legitimacy crisis. On the other hand, the Fatah still has some pockets of support uh, among the Gazan populations. There are certain elements, there are certain families and and sectors that have been supporting Fatah. The Palestinian Authority has actually been paying the salaries of um, civil servants in, in the Gaza Strip, right? So there, are, there have been some official connections between the West Bank and, and Gaza, between the Palestinian Authority and the Gazans. And at the end of the day, the Palestinian Authority, despite the criticism that it, it has faced in, the, um, in, in, in recent years, it is still the only Palestinian organization that is still representing the Palestinian people. So it does make, it does probably make the Fatah and the Palestinian Authority more legitimate than any other external organization or body that, that will, will, will come to Gaza. Yes, and it's interesting just in terms of the timing of all of this. You mentioned that Fatah may well be the only show in town in Gaza when uh, the war is hopefully over and hopefully the civilian casualties can be avoided on both sides as much as possible and this can be brought to a conclusion. But do you think this might be, I mean, how cynical do we need to be about this, I suppose, Yanov? Is this, are statements like this kind of the price of 
uh, that, that Israel may extract from them, that the international community may extract from them to say, well, actually, Fatah, if you uh, go as far as you can in condemning Hamas terrorists, well, actually, uh, we'll facilitate you being the leaders of Gaza, even though that's probably the most likely outcome anyway. I, I, I actually genuinely believe that Fatah was not happy with with with, um, with, with, with Hamas's attack on Israel. So you, you, think sincere, you think um, they're being you think they're being sincere in this? Yeah, absolutely, and they don't necessarily do it out of support for Israel, but out of realization that this attack has actually caused a massive disaster for the Palestinian people. Uh, Fatah is not the only element in the Arab world to have condemned Hamas for yes. the decision, but it's the first. But, but, but they are Palestinians, and that makes a huge difference. But yes. I think it's not just a sinister effect to them. How will this be received in Israel and indeed by people in the Palestinian authorities and indeed by people in Gaza? I, uh, for a long time, the Israeli government under Benjamin Netanyahu has rejected the idea of strengthening the Palestinian Authority, certainly before the uh, 7th of October. But I think that as time goes by, even uh, some of the um, even some of the um, staunchest voices against the Palestinian Authority realize that there is no other option. There is no other option because someone will have to take over yeah. the Gaza Strip. The Israeli government is not planning on doing so. Mm -hmm. So someone needs to take over. And the Palestinian Authority at this point is really the only actor yeah. that also has the legitimacy and connections in the Gaza Strip to achieve that. Fascinating stuff. Thank you very much indeed. That's Jana Voller, who is Senior Lecturer in Middle East Politics. Thank you very much indeed for your time. And uh, that story uh, came in just this morning. So thank you to uh, Jana for coming on uh, quickly about it. Elizabeth is in Aberdeen. She's given me a call on 0344 499 1000. Elizabeth, I think you have a question for me about this general issue. Is that right? You're very welcome to the programme this morning. Yeah, thank you, Peter. I was just wondering what it is that you, that you know so emphatically that 15 ICJ judges do not know when it comes to genocide because you sort of cut Tony off an hour or so ago, cut him off at the knees when he brought it up, uh, telling him that uh, there is no genocide happening there. How do you know that, Peter? Well, the definition of genocide is, and I knew your call was coming, so I just Googled it just in the break beforehand, is the deliberate killing of a large number of people from a particular nation or ethnic group with the aim of destroying that nation or group. A campaign of genocide that is not uh, what israel is doing oh you don't think so well no. a lot of us think that is what they're doing um and i don't know how you can be in disagreement with all these judges who it's their it's because i think they're wrong their and also their judges they're, they're yeah because you think they're wrong you don't know they're wrong well i do because elizabeth there are many but there are not well okay well let me explain why and then perhaps you can give me your opinion um there are judges on the international criminal court who are from or are from countries that have unbelievably terrible human rights records like Russia and China, for example, and I'm free in a democracy to disagree with their decision necessarily. I don't think it's democracy. I, I, I don't think it's uh, uh, what they are putting forward within their uh, view is actually genocide. And also they haven't said that, they, well, their judgment is saying there is a risk of genocide. They're not saying that there actually has been genocide plausible, in Israel. Plausible, plausible genocide is the wording they use. Okay. And like these other countries that do not have a great record on human rights really don't have anything to do with it. That that's really what about those? And it's got nothing to do with what we're talking about. I don't really, I, I, I don't really I understand don't your point. I mean, you're, you're I don't. I I do not disagree that some of the judges are coming from countries that don't have a great record themselves, but they're sitting on a panel and they were given the task to do this, and it's as close as you can get to genocide, and the fact that you can't see that is really disappointing. Just just one more comment, if I may. Sure. The fact, the fact that you didn't know, that your research hasn't gone far enough to know about David Miller, that amazes me. Okay, I, I, I can't know every single thing that a caller or texter brings up. There are literally hundreds of different issues that people uh, make points on, Elizabeth, over the course of a three-hour programme. And I, I, I mean, I, 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 that person made that point, and certainly I have, you know, I've read into it now in the breaks and so on, but if someone just threw something at me on the air, I can't know every single news story. It's impossible. It's not about knowing every single news story. That's a pretty big one, Peter. But anyway, thank you for listening to me. I appreciate it. No, not at all. Thanks, Elizabeth. Thanks for your call. Uh, that was Elizabeth in Aberdeen.